Thanks to Brilliant for supporting this video. Because you watch Bizarre Beasts, Brilliant is offering you a 30-day free trial and 20% off an annual premium subscription at brilliant.org slash bizarre beasts. There are three things you need to know about Sicilians. Not people from Sicily. I'm talking about the animals. One, Sicilians are not worms or snakes or eels. They are amphibians like frogs and salamanders. Two, many Sicilians are immune to the venom of certain snakes, but they are not all immune in the same way. And three, in a certain sense, some of them eat their mothers from the inside out, and some eat them from the outside in. If you want to support this channel and get an amazing pin every month, the Bizarre Beasts Pin Club will now be open for subscriptions for the whole month. Sign up by March 20th, and the first pin you will get will be one of these weird little guys. Sicilians live in the tropical and subtropical parts of the Americas, Africa, and Asia, as well as on some islands, including Sri Lanka and the Philippines and the Seychelles. There are around 180 species, and most of them live underground. The one family found in South America is aquatic. They tend to be carnivorous, and they are not very picky. The terrestrial species eat things like worms, insects, snails, and small vertebrates, while the aquatic ones eat swimming insects, fish, and eels. They range in size from about 1.5 meters long to around 10 centimeters long, and they are the group of amphibians you are most likely to forget about, even if you knew they existed in the first place, which is okay if you didn't. That's why we make the show. The thing that makes them pretty obviously different from other amphibians is that they all have no legs. All other amphibians fall somewhere on the have legs spectrum. Whether or not the legs are useful, that's another story. Many frogs and toads basically have super legs, or at least four limbs that they actually use to get around. Amphiumus, a family of aquatic salamanders have four hilariously tiny, mostly useless legs. And sirens, a different family of aquatic salamanders, have just two tiny front legs. But all Sicilians have no legs, and like Amphiumus and sirens with their vestigial legs, it's probably because they adapted to wiggle through both water and dirt. It's pretty common for both swimming and burrowing animals to reduce or lose their limbs over evolutionary time, especially if they also become increasingly tube-shaped. And for the burrowing Sicilians, this has brought them into conflict with another classic legless tube-shaped animal, snakes. Sicilians seem like they would be easy prey for the terrestrial members of the family of snakes known as elephants. This family includes coral snakes, mambas, and cobras, and its members primarily have venom that interferes with the nervous system. But surprisingly, Sicilians have a few tricks up their sleeves to deal with these predators. Now, Sicilians are old. DNA estimates put the origin of their lineage back something like 370 to 270 million years ago, and the oldest fossil we've found of them dates back 220 million years. They've been squirming around, spreading from continent to continent for a very long time. Elipids, on the other hand, are relatively young. The family only originated something like 38 million years ago, but they have dispersed throughout the tropics and subtropics of most continents since then. And when they first showed up in places where Sicilians lived, it was probably a very bad time to be one of these amphibians. Elipids would have been an intense selective pressure on Sicilians. But some of them obviously survived, and it probably came down to a certain amount of genetic luck. Some individuals must have had natural mutations that gave them some level of resistance to elipid venom. Those survivors would have been better able to reproduce and pass those genes along to their offspring than Sicilians without those mutations. And we know the selective pressure was intense because resistance resistance to elephant venom evolved convergently at least 15 different times in Sicilians. It also evolved in three different ways, and some Sicilian species have a combination of resistance mechanisms. The mutations either block the neurotoxin from reaching their nervous system receptors altogether, change the shape of the receptors so the toxins can't attach to them, or repel the toxins by switching the electromagnetic charge of the receptors. Not bad for a terminally uncharismatic amphibian. If you want to know more more about this evolutionary arms race or about elephant venom, head over to our sister channel, PBS Eons, next week. Or right now. It depends on when you watch this. Unfortunately for Sicilians, snakes aren't the only thing trying to eat them. Their own babies are too, <laughs> at least in some species. And yes, this is gonna get kind of gross. They either, number one, lay eggs that hatch into aquatic larvae, like many other amphibians. Two, lay eggs that hatch into miniature versions of adult Sicilians, which is called direct development. Or three, they give birth to live 
young. And Sicilians are surprisingly good mothers. They do things like guarding their nests, for example. Some of them also take care of their newly hatched babies. In some of the species with direct development, the mother even feeds the babies her own skin. And look, I don't mean that she sheds it and then they eat it. I mean they literally tear and peel it off of her body with their baby Sicilian teeth. This behavior actually has a name. It's called maternal dermatophagy, and the mother's skin cells prepare for it by becoming especially rich in lipids, which have a lot of calories for their weight. But that's not the only wild maternal feeding behavior found in Sicilians. In the species that give birth, the mothers feed their offspring before they are born. Which doesn't sound like that big of a deal, because like all mothers have to provide nutrition to their developing young, but Sicilians have taken it to a very weird place. In the mother's oviduct, the tube where embryonic development takes place, the offspring start out by hanging out in their egg membranes, feeding on yolk. But when the yolk is gone, the fetal Sicilians leave the egg membrane in search of other food, which they get by scraping the walls of their mother's oviduct with their specialized baby teeth and consuming the lipid-rich secretions and tissue lining the tube for nutrients. Sounds, you know, unpleasant, but I don't know. I've never had that happen to me. Sicilians, for all that they've been around for something like 300 million years, are actually pretty poorly understood compared to other amphibians. But now you know at least three things about them, even if you might wish you didn't. And that's the beauty of bizarre beasts. Sometimes the things that make animals weird to us are awesome, and sometimes they are gross, sometimes they are both. Don't forget, sign up for the Pin Club to celebrate these amazing animals by March 20th if you want a Sicilian pin. You could do that at BizarreBeastsShow.com. Thank you. You know Sicilians are amphibians, like salamanders and frogs. You might also know that many amphibians are poisonous. They secrete toxins to keep predators from biting them. And until 2020, we did not think that any amphibians were venomous, possessing a toxic bite of their own. But it turns out that Sicilians might actually be venomous. They have glands in their mouths that produce saliva containing enzymes found in the venoms of snakes, scorpions, and wasps. But rather than injecting the venom through fangs like snakes do, their delivery system is basically coat the teeth in saliva and then bite. The researchers who published this finding originally are still following up on their results because the enzymes they found aren't exclusive to venom, but it's pretty cool that there might be a venomous amphibian out there. Also, in case you were wondering, the name Sicilian means blind one, and it's pretty fitting as they tend to have eyes that are either tiny or completely covered by skin. Instead of seeing, they pick up sensory data from their environment using tiny tentacles located between their nostrils and eyes. The origin and spread of weird adaptations like Sicilian's convergently evolving resistance to venom is governed by mathematical probability. And with Brilliant's new Introduction to Probability course, you can build a foundation in probability to better understand the likelihood of events and learn how to answer real data questions using probability and simulation. And that's just one of many courses you can explore with Brilliant, the online learning platform with thousands of interactive lessons in science, computer science, and math. Brilliant lets you learn anywhere at any time. And if you aren't sure what course to take, Brilliant has a quiz you can take when you sign up to be matched with content that fits your skill level and interest. You could try it for free for 30 days at brilliant.org slash bizarre beasts, or by clicking the link in the description down below. And that link also gives you 20% off an annual premium Brilliant subscription. Thanks to Brilliant for supporting this episode of Bizarre Beasts. Mm -hmm.